Season 3, Episode 4. Okay, Chip. I've got my spooky hot lady fishing waders, and I am now mentally prepared to enter the dump. Oh, Nita, the things you say. It's a beautiful Halloween Eve at the dump. Morning, Ronnie. How's the slime pit? It's been pretty quiet ever since all them blobs come run and jumped in it. I peeked under the tarp, but I ain't heard nary a blurble or a gurgle or nothing. Well, good. But just in case, we're gonna set up a magical ward around the slime pit to keep the blobs contained. So, let's go through our checklist for setting up the wards around the slime pit. Step one, from the ether, from the mist, come before me, Simonus. Have you nincompoops summoned me to the final warding destination? My etheric particles feel like shredded ham. Shredded ham? I bet that would be good on a sandwich. Yes, Simon, this is the last ward you'll have to place, thank you. You know, you could have just stayed summoned the first time and ridden over here in the car with us. We would have even picked you up a shredded ham sandwich at the drive-thru. I don't want to spend one moment longer with you slime warding weirdies than I have to. I would rather suffer the indignity of a thousand summonings than ride in a rankly air-freshened jalopy with this steering stooge. Okay, but that does hurt my feelings. This is it, Mr. Simon. We would like a six-point ward around the perimeter of the slime pit. Please. Pretty please. Don't steal my tarp. I need it. As though I would debase myself to commit theft over a wrinkly old tarp. Do I look like Johnny Chainsaw slavering over wood scraps at the Bone Depot? You look like a man who knows a good tarp when he sees it, is all I'm saying. Yeah, and Simon, he means that as a compliment. Can we just... Proceed to step two. Align yourselves to the four corners of the pit as we hail the guardians. Ronnie, my man, you get the north point. Nita and I are east and west. Now we must begin the rhythmic chant to bind the creature we wish to stay behind the ward. I'll begin and you must join in. Blah, 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 Hey, Chip, why do you think the blob binding rhythm is the same as that Earth radio hit from 1961? I don't know, Nita, but look, you can cha-cha to the beat. The Earth song stole this beat from the ritual, you big-haired diaper bats. Now silence! For step four, we must focus as the wards appear. And finally, the incantation. Sticky, slimy, bid thee, bind thee. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Summoned Simon. This has definitely bought us some time. Let this wretched town go to oblivion for all I care. I am merely doing as compelled. Oh, yeah? Then I compel you to say you're welcome. Then I dismiss thee. You're welcome, nincompoops. You know, Nita, I think Simon is really starting to like working with us. Uh. Y'all in cattle holler. <laughs> cattle holler, cattle holler. 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 Yeah.
Citizens are lining up for the big Halloween Eve parade and preparing their biggest, most voluminous pillowcases to be used as trick-or-treat sacks. You could also tie up some big ol' one your pants and go trick-or-treat with Dad. Oh, you mean like some giant grandma bloomers? Good tip, Pumpkin. Is that a good tip? Hold on, make fun later. Here comes my piece. From CHTV News Freelance, not a real correspondent, Benita Von Wagenkamp. You may think this is just an everyday run-of-the-mill dump tarp, but oh- But that story's boring, so we're going to cut to a package about Belfry's bonbons, which expects to see record sales for the Halloween holiday and the day after Halloween Christmas candy launch. Hang on to your pointed boots, cause we gon' knock them off with our Christmas candy launch, which happens the minute y'all get back from your Halloween on Earth. I got a real special candy coating that's gonna be the talk of the town. <laughs> well, that's really just the last straw. He barely used any of my story, and then he's- Nita, please, save your rage for when you're on the air again. Uh... Hello, team. I'm here for our strategy meeting. Hi, Albert. And Ms. Weaver? Are you part of our Cosmic Slime strategy meeting? What? No. I'm just here to make sure Caretaker Ghost doesn't try to float out of his obligation to be the Grand Marshal in the Halloween Eve Parade. He said he's going to be there, right, Mr. Ghost? Yes, Ms. Weaver. As long as I can move through the parade route efficiently. I've got a lot of important work to do. Don't worry, Mr. Ghost. The sheriff said you can ride with him up front on the police horse. Except it's not a police horse, but it's Mr. Goliath's hellhound Goliath dressed up like a police horse. Isn't that darling? Oops, somebody's bringing a shovel. Gonna have to. Albert, it seems as though time is of the essence today. Shall we discuss the critical next steps in our path away from cosmic slime annihilation? Oh, would you look at me? Interrupting the Big Shot Town strategist. So rude. I'm going to go over here and browse. Albert, you can start the meeting. Thank you, Ms. Waver. Bonita, a roll call if you don't mind. Sure. Let's go around the room. I'm Pumpkin. This is my store. I ain't really in this meeting. Not this time, Pumpkin. Your job is to represent all of us at the Halloween Eve Parade. I'm gonna be the best float and catch all the candy. Uh, Pumpkin, if you have a float in the parade, you're supposed to be throwing candy, not catching it. I said what I said. Rochester Macabre, town elder. I will be staying at the store and providing support as needed. Albert Aloysius Ghost, town caretaker. I will spend today in an intensive work session with Minerva and Henry Vax. We will be outlining a plan to use the town's frock crystal to zoop the cosmic slime back into space. Ooh. Chip Clearly, car salesman and maverick with sunglasses. I will perform mind melds as needed with the slime. Bonita Von Wangenkamp, part-time news anchor. I guess I'll also be doing something very dangerous and important. Chip and Bonita, I have another assignment for you. Is it at the dump? It's not at the dump, but it's somewhere just as exciting. Come on, casino gambling boat. I need you and Bonita to pay a visit to the Elder God's retirement home. Yeah. Oh. Okay, what's going on there? Got some cosmic slime in the parcheesy board? Combing through the town records, it seems that our most long-in-the-tooth citizens once dealt with Swooflurpolith eons ago. Learn from old monster memories. Got it. Well, Albert, this isn't the most exciting thing we've ever been asked to do, but I think we'll get a lot out of our visit. Yeah, we'll go out to the Elder God's retirement home and have a Devil May Care, Chip Clearly good time. We can do skateboarding tricks. Or play poker, have a little tipple. One more thing. Pastor Munch will be your tour guide. Uh... Oh. The main office, and that there's a guardrail, Chip, and now we're coming up on the main dining room. It's got a bone chandelier, some silky red napkins, and... Are those paper plates? Well, they keep eating the plates. I've seen enough. 
I'm ready for a room at Tentacle Terrace. Okay, well, give it a few millennia, Chip. It's an elder god retirement home. Oh, now here's the parlor. The old ones love to sit here and play a organ and visit with each other, talking about old memories and whatever's got them tickled. Watch the wheel. You're on my tentacle. Well, you shouldn't save seats. Friends, this is Chip and Nita. They're going to help me today with my prayer rounds. Pray to me. Okay, we'll check on y'all later. So, Pastor, do you really think this guy you mentioned knows something useful about the blob? Oh, yes. We're going to see Mr. Buford. He's a bullfrog. That's cute. He was called Mr. Buford McGloon, the harbinger of plague. But now it's just Buford. He knows about all kind of old things like wars and stamps, and I just know he can help you. Okay, then maybe we can wrap this up and head over to the parade. They're not going to let you put your truck in the parade. Well, don't tell the truck. I've made some promises. Okay, here's Mr. Buford's room. He just loves company. Mr. Buford? Frog, oh giant frog. Hi, Mr. Buford. I brought you some visitors. How do you do? I'm Chip Clearly, a psychic race car driver. And I'm Bonita. I think your biome is very cute. I hunger. Dinner at dusk, Mr. Buford. Why don't we sit a spell? I know Chip and Nita have some questions for you. Where's my sock? I won't have guests without my sock. Well, where's the last place you had it? No, I looked there. It's not there. It's hiding. Well, how about can I help you, Luke? Chip, get a load of these books. Exegesis on Orion. Mmm, pass. How about Blurp, a characterological study of cosmic beings? My god, that would take years to read. Yeah, I think this guy has good information. That was you. Uh, Mr. Buford. Hmm? I don't know if you watch the news, but our town has a bit of a blob problem. Squooflapolith. Yes! You know him? Oh, yes. I was summoned to fight Squooflamalith in the Slime War of Vault 15. Or was it 17? Memory forms, then fades. Well, he's back, Mr. Buford. I fought him in a handsome death race, but we still don't know why he wants this town or how to make him leave. I can't remember. I need pudding to help me think. Did you say pudding? Like it comes in a specimen cup? Yes, the residents had brain pudding for lunch, but Mr. Buford, he's always wanting more. Swells of gray, the squish of gland. Two puddings, please. Sorry, Chip, but they don't keep extra. You'll have to wait for the next brain delivery. I guess we can ask around, like, see if somebody didn't eat theirs. Pudding. Okay, we gonna buy you some, but let's move on to prayer. Everybody hold hands. There you go. You grab a hand, you grab his hand. That's a tongue. Dear Maker, thank you for new friends and interesting smells and... It's in the pudding. And pudding? Louder. The Maker can't hear you. Help us find pudding so we can learn about blobs. Amen. Amen. Okay, slot B6, my clipboard says it's supposed to be Count Fangula's Dojo. Not you, Gablina, you're not B6. Well, where am I supposed to be? You're G6. You're supposed to line up over there by the tiny terror twirlers. Man, are you sure? I'm driving the mosquito truck, and I don't want to be gassing no tiny twirlers. Fine, Gablina, you can stay here. I'll just have to change the order on the sheet for the announcer and the judges' tables. Ugh. Okay, now to remind you of the parade regulations. No entries over 15 feet high, no pyro, no bubble machines. We had an incident last year. No unapproved pets, no unauthorized music. Initial here. <laughs> All right, fast talking lady. Okay, that's it for B flank. Now C flank. C1 is all checked in. The library's float is looking good over here, screaming Mimi. Thanks. 
Now who'll see to? Mr. Giant Eyeball and the Carrion Bird Watching Society. Oh, would you look at that? You float as a vulture. Now that is some excellent palm rolling. Thank you. I'm pretty nervous this wing's gonna fall off. Okay, well now here's the sticker to affix to your banner for when you pass the announcer booth and judge's table. Judge's table? I didn't know we were gonna be judged. Oh, please, Mr. Giant Eyeball. You would have known that if you would have used your giant eyeball to look through the parade packet I gave you a month ago. Don't worry, it's just for fun. It's categories like scariest float, best in show, best candy throw, things like that. They're gonna come through and prejudge though, so you better fix your dangling wing. Well, all right. Okay, now I need you to initial here. No entries over 15 feet high, no pyro, no bubble machines, no unapproved pets, no unauthorized music. Well, how do I know if it's authorized? Mr. Giant Eyeball, give me a break. I don't have time to tell you everything in detail. It was in your packet. Authorized music is marching bands, pipe organs, minor key barbershop groups, and ghostly laments. No peppy music at the Halloween Eve parade. Okay, well, I don't have any music for my float. Okay then, Mr. Giant Eyeball. It's a good thing you made me explain all that then, isn't it? Moving on, C2 is Belfry's Bonbons, who pre-checked in. Mr. Bat Singer, thank you for following directions. Well, it's my pleasure, Mrs. Weaver. This is a mighty good day for a mighty good parade, and I'm aiming to win best candy throw. Show the lady, Ring Toss. Okay, boss. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, that candy cannon should us pack a punch. Now, you ain't seen the best part. Look at this now. Apple Bob, y'all show Mrs. Weaver the skeet explosion. Ring Josh, you shoot the cannon up. Run the Apple Bob. While Apple Bob skeets the sweets. And... Oh, candy raining from the sky. So delightful. Now, don't tell anyone I said so, but you've got to be a shoe in for best candy throw. I don't vote, though. I just bother the judges while they're voting. Well, now, that's all right. Hey, have one. Oh, for Pete's sake, do you hear that? <laughs> Unauthorized music in my parade? Oh. Didn't they read my packet? Somebody's got music. Okay, excuse me, Flanksy. I have to go take care of this. There's pudding in that parlor. I can practically smell it. I think that's ointment. I'd eat both of them. I've already seen this program. You have not. It's a parade. Hey, everybody. Are we enjoying the Halloween parade? Trying to, but them floats is moving too fast. It's rude. Well, I'd like you all to meet my friends. This is Chip Clearly and Nita Wayne and Camp. Hello. Hi there. They work at a store. They like to save towns. And they're real busy every Sunday. Hello. I am Sir Sandra Goss the Fowl. You shall be my bride, and we shall rule the galaxy in an ecstasy of power. Nita? Mm, better not. Okay, he goes by Cecil. And this is Mo Tarless Go Rogerdale. We call her Mo or Darling. She answers to both. Then we got Rude Barlaby or Ruby. And this here is Pearl. She don't have a nickname. Yes, I do. It's Pearl. Pastor, tell this crazy man we had two ice cream cones in this town. There was one over here called Bloopy's East. You're confused, Ruby. It was a garbage can. No, nah, you could see it right out that window. Yes, I do see a dusting of sparkles just over that hill. Son, those are floaters. Chip, enough with the glasses. There was a hero from way back could see things like that. A legend who pushed back the shadow. This hero? Did he look exactly like me? It was a long time ago. It looked like me. I think he looked like everybody here. Anyway, monsters, I don't know if you watch the news. We oh, watch yeah. everything yeah. on yes, the television. Okay, so then you know we have a blob problem. You should talk to Buford. He battled slime in the festering heights. 
Okay, well, we did talk to Buford, but he needs a sock. Pudding, Chip. He needs pudding to help him remember how to get rid of that blob. And you want our pudding that we pay for? And hoard under our beds for no reason at all? I think that's the gist of it. Well, if you want our pudding, you're gonna have to do something. Something we enjoy. Like Mahjong, but let us cheat. No, we need a song. Yeah, yeah we that need a song. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, maybe. Something up tempo. And work my name into it. Yes, yeah. put our names in the song. One, two, three. Well. well. Cecil, Cecil Pearl, Pearl and, and Ruby, Ruby have a good friend named, named Mo, Mo, but she, she goes by Darwin and she, she knows, knows how, how to sew. sew. I like this song. How do they both know the words? They're codependent. You know, I had a dog. Put my dog in the song. What was his name? His name was Puke. Okay, here we go. His, his name, name was Puke, Puke and, and we think, think it's really cute. cute. Yeah. Yeah. that part. We didn't say. Now bring it home in a delightful manner. We're on good footing cause we're gonna get pudding. And we'll fight a big blob with some help from a frog. When we save Monster Town we will come back around if, if we, we don't, don't get eaten by the blob. Marvelous. Marvelous. That was pretty good. Wasn't great. Okay I'm gonna be honest. We don't have pudding. We love it, and we ate all of it. It was good. <laughs> yeah, of I figured. Of course. But we know someone who never eats her pudding, and that's the truth. No tricks. So, some tricks. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Well, now, this is just ridiculous. The parade has started, and I still can't track down that goofball with the unauthorized music. Excuse me. Excuse me. Next, we have former Real Housewife of Colonel Holla, Botch Lipula, being driven in a custom convertible hearse by Holt Hearses. Here's a fun fact about this girl. The exterior is studded with over 100,000 dark crystals and acrylic nail tips. Marsh Lipula will be returning to television this fall in what is destined to be a very low-rating Real Housewives spin-off. And the judges are awarding the float three shrieks. I love that beautiful sound. And there it is again. Well, now this is ridiculous. Excuse me, excuse me. I just can't believe this. Sheriff, thank goodness. I need your help. What well, now, hey, Ms. Weaver, what can I do you for? Someone in this parade is playing unauthorized music. Can't you hear it? Oh, yeah, I've been hearing that. <laughs> I mean, it's got a good beat. I've been kind of bobbing my bones to it. Sheriff, you're a dedicated public servant and I respect you, but you're being a goofball. Just like that goofball with the funky boombox. I went over the guidelines with every parade participant and I can't believe any of them would flout the rules like this. Make way for the town's most beloved member of the Gord family. It's Pumpkin! Hey yo, come You got any candy? Can I have it? Atherton, it looks like Pumpkin is walking up to the townsfolk lining the street and asking them for candy. And it looks like the townspeople are more than happy to oblige you, Trisha. And for this brazen display of Halloween candy madness, the judges are awarding Pumpkin four and a half streaks and the coveted most ambitious float superlative. Hey, all right, Pumpkin, get it, boy. Okay, Mr. Sheriff, back to my problem. Well, now, Miss Weaver, how about you don't worry about that old music? Everybody just out here having a good time. Freight's going real good. And now, give it up for Gablina, driving the town mosquito truck. Now, just a warning for all you insectoid citizens, you might want to hold your breath for a few moments. Woo-hoo! Happy Halloween, y'all! Get it! Woo-hoo! <laughs> 
Don't you hear it reverberating down this alley? Forget it, I'm gonna track down that joker myself. Sheriff, is this your scooter? Well, it belongs to my little girl. Perfect. Well now, Miss Weaver, I'm not sure if you ought to be, be right doing back. Excuse me, coming through. Spider on a scooter coming through. Rude. She done lost her mind. Azragoth begot Alice, who married Johar the Terrible, who passed down gorgeous red hair to baby Zahn, who was very small. I mean, great big! That's the big one. Who married the one-eyed bell ringer at St. Geran's Cathedral, and they had a baby, and that's your favorite grandchild, and his name is... Starts with apostrophe. Blifnagob. Very well done, Chip, clearly. Not many can ace the photo album. I gotta say, Mildromeda, I probably know your family better than mine at this point. All my uncles kind of run together, you know. How's your progress, Bonitor? Uh, Bonitor has removed your last tentacle bunion, which, by the way, was not easy with an emery board and a thing of wet wipes. Okay, okay, you earned it. Here's my pudding. It's vile stuff, you know. It's made of brains. Can you imagine? Huh. <laughs> Do you have another one? I don't know. Perhaps another photo album will jog my memory. You have fun with that. I'll call Albert and give him an update on our progress. Make it quick. We'll start at the beginning of time. Hello, Nita. This is Albert answering the telephone. Hey, Albert. It's me at Tentacle Terrace. I think we have a lead for you on our blob problem. Okay, then. Let me record everything you say on my new stationery. Okay, so we met this really smart, really old bullfrog named Buford, and he fought in something called the Slime War, which happened sometime around aught 15 or 17. Whoa, the freaking Slime War. He must be older than that. Okay, Nita, I made a big heading called Bullfrog Slime Wisdom, and I can't wait to hear everything you learned. Well, we had to take a break for pudding. That's insane! But now we think he'll tell us about some battle he was in called the Festering Heights. Okay, just so you know, Minerva just fell up out her chair, and Mr. Vex is doing wheelies up and down the hallway. This is very exciting. Oh yeah, it's real exciting over here. It's not a quilt, it's an afghan. Okay, but it's your pattern? We assumed the Battle of Festering Heights was apocryphal. If Mr. Buford truly was there, maybe he could tell you about something called Convergence. Convergence. Okay, sure, sounds good, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Chip, you ready to go? Nita, look at this beautiful portrait of Mildromeda. Why, Chip? Prude. Another exhilarating showcase, courtesy of the Tiny Terror Twirlers. <laughs> Atherton, did you know that each of the razor-sharp machetes twirled by the Tiny Terrors has a specially weighted handle? All I know is that the Tiny Terror Twirlers are adorable and have just been awarded cutest float and a score of four and a half shrieks. Think you can help move with me? I'm just gonna zip around this dumpster and then it's all over for you, Mr. Boombox. Here we go. Oh, yeah! Oh, I cannot believe this! It's my nemesis! It's the party monster! I should have known you were gonna show up and ruin my parade! Man, what are you talking about, lady? He's 
He's making this parade awesome! Boogie down, party monster! Boogie down! Listen here, party monster! You didn't even fill out an application packet! Stop dancing in the street! You almost ran into the judge's table! And what have we here? An unexpected but very welcome entry into the parade, we have Party Monster. He's busting some signature moves while an irate Grandma Spider soups around him on a scooter. Listen here, you big orange buffoon. That's right, Atherton. According to legend, the Party Monster never sleeps but only takes the occasional disco nap. You get my muscles. And for this delightful display, the judges have awarded five shrieks. You know what that means? Body Monster and the Widow Weaver have won the day's grand honor, Best in Show. Did you say we won Best in Show? But we didn't even fill out an application form. Along with the Best in Show title, our winners get a gift certificate for a full-service mandible manicure at Sally's Talon and Claws. Oh yeah, sock it to me. Oh, a mandible manicure? Eh, come on, you big galoot. We're having a spa day. Oh yeah. I think it's your turn again, Chip. Okay, Mr. Buford. My little game piece guy is slipping right past your defenses. Come on! It's like he's not even trying. Maybe you should let her play. No, she doesn't play games. She doesn't know that life is a game. I do know life is a game. That's why I don't play extra ones. <laughs> Shame. I think you'd be good at this game. What's it called again? It has many names. Some call it crossbones. Looks like checkers. It's pretty much checkers. While Chip thinks very hard about his next move, we would love to hear what you know about the blob. Like, why does he want our town? Because you are a community of individuals. Uh, sometimes we say wackadoos. Look at the pieces on the game board. We know each piece has its own strength and weaknesses. And this diversity makes each of them more effective than they are alone. Ugh, the blob doesn't know that? No. Screwflapalith believes that distinctiveness is a mistake. An abomination. And let me guess, he told you this in some blobby monologue. Actually, we learn much from his cult members after the war. The Cult of the Blob, starring Nita Von Wingenkamp. Ugh, like I would ever. Wait, what do they believe? The cult held that the Big Bang was an error, which broke the one perfect being into countless pieces and scattered them throughout the universe, creating life as we know it. They believed Scrooflapalith was this original perfect being. As such, they were devoted to his only cause. To help him eat every living thing and undo the Big Bang. And you say I eat too much. The blob will not rest until we join his consensus. Pfft. Talk about ego. Yeah, he just happens to be the center of the universe. Real convenient. There's no way I'm joining the blob. And I bet most people in this town feel the same way. Your move, Mr. Buford. Come on. Indeed, son. That's why us elders fought Scrooflapalith in the slime war and whooped his green honey back into space. Okay, so how do we do that? We just heard about this thing called Convergence? Yes, Convergence. That's how we stopped him. On every world, there exists a network of invisible currents that connect to the great sources of power. A very few can even see them. Oh, I see them. They're sparkly. I call them sparkles. It's a very rare gift. Come on, Chip. No, really. I can see them with these glasses. 
All right, just so we're clear, the glasses are a prize for the summer reading program, and Chip only got them because we know somebody at the library. Or maybe I was destined to have sparkle vision. They could be floaters. Could be ley lines. That's what the currents are called. I think I heard about ley lines on the conspiracy channel. It's no conspiracy. The wizard who summoned me redirected the ley lines to converge upon Squooflerpolith opening a gateway that sucked him into deepest, darkest space. All right, we might be able to work with that. Thanks to my new power. Sure. Also, Mr. Buford's right flank is exposed now if you want to stop losing the game. <laughs> I was going to do that anyway. The Fate Square. Did I just win? Yes, but I was distracted. And I landed on the fate square because maybe I'm supposed to be a hero. I did tell you how to win. Only because you saw where my eyes were looking. This is only a game. But if you believe in such things, the fate square is not destiny. It means only that you have a chance to move the world. And you may fail. But you must try either way. So that means we need to find the blob find the ley lines, and point them right at Squooflerpolis' ambiguous face. That's how we did it. Worked pretty good. Thank you so much, Mr. Buford. You might have just saved everybody in town. Is there anything at all we can do for you? Watch the parade with me. Okay. Let's do it. While I accept this prize, we're going to do it all over again so we can follow the rules. No do-overs! Appreciate y'all working so late. Y'all know this is my busy time. Thanks, Beth Singer. All right, Snake. Apple Bob, ring toss. Y'all hang back a minute. Need to bend your ear about something. What? I want an update on my Christmas candy. As you know, I got a lot riding on my new product. Tastes good. Yeah, but is it sticky? Very sticky. Well, that's good. Y'all can run on home, but be ready first thing Halloween morning. Here? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Something wrong with them two. At least they ain't squeamish about a good idea. Know a boss when they see one. Talking blob, get into my candy factory. With a strange joke, getting old. Relax, I come to tell you that preparations are underway. Excellent. And how about yourself? You pull down all the magic you gonna need. I am complete with it. Replete, he says. Yeah, you look ready in there. Hard to believe you was a little bitty old thing. Looked like a little booger fell out somebody's nose. Now you're something else. Remember your promise. Oh, my good blob. I'm a man of my word. Well, see. Yep. 